Welcome back to Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. On Saturday, we made our first trip to Greenville Pickens Speedway for weekly racing action at the historic half mile headline by the track's late model stock division. With a strong crowd on hand ready for a hot night of racing, there was action all around the legendary half mile Greenville Pickens Speedway in Easley, South Carolina. On the drop of the green flag, Anthony Anders in the 36 and Trey Gibson in the 112 went at it, with Gibson taking the early lead while Tasha Coomer moved into third. Roger Powell was on the move and on lap two he powered around Coomer on the outside to take over the third position. Up front, Anders was stalking Gibson. On lap eight, Anders gets to the inside of Gibson and moves into the lead off turn two. Powell would look to follow Anders and eventually would make his way around Gibson to take over second. Things got harder for, An for Anders on lap 10 as his car briefly trailed smoke. That was his power steering going south, and he'll have to drive the next 30 laps wrestling his late model around the Greenville Pickens half mile with no power steering. Meanwhile, Gibson is stalking Powell, looking for an opening to retake the second position, but can't make the move. Finally, with 10 laps to go, Gibson makes the move work, and he takes over the second position. Up front, Anders has checked out and looks to have the win in hand. But with four laps to go, a rash of yellow fever broke out at Greenville Pickens. The first occurred with four laps to go and bunched up the field. Caution would fly again before a full lap under green was completed with a multi-car crash in turn four involving Ron Hall, Brandon Fox, Daryl Durham Jr., and Maxie Bush. On the final restart, Gibson tries hard to get a run on Anders, but he can't make it work as Anders pulls away. He'll go on to score the late model feature win. Gibson comes across the line in second with Powell in third and Marty Ward in fourth. Comer was flagged in fifth but was disqualified in post-race tech, moving Ryan Walker to the fifth position. Things got wild in the Chargers feature as Danny Gilbert jumped out to the lead on the start with Travis Cox and Tim Crow giving chase. James Johnson was looking to move forward and would charge his way to third around Crow off turn four. Lap two, Crow tangles with Dale Walker in turn three with Crow coming to a stop in turn four, drawing the caution. On the restart, Gilbert moves back to the lead with Cox and Johnson in tow while a huge log jam stacks up in turn one. Meanwhile, up front, Cox powers his way to the lead off turn four, but it would go away in turn two as Cox's car gets sideways, bringing out another caution. Gilbert is back in the lead on the next restart with Ricky Stevens and Johnson giving chase. Gilbert would see his knight take a bad turn when he slowed suddenly off of turn four. That moved Stevens to the top spot. Lap six, Chris Harville tangles with Travis Cox in turn three. Cox goes up and onto the berm in the inside, bringing out the caution. Harville is not happy, and he shows it as he walks back to the pits. But his night was not over. After his car is towed back to the pits, Harville and his crew get to work, and he roars back on track before the restart. Meanwhile, up front, Stevens powers away to the victory with Johnson in second, Andy Norris in third, Travis Cox in fourth, and Danny Gilbert in fifth. In the street stock feature, the field stacked up four wide going into turn one on the start with Scott Walker jumping into the lead, followed by Dylan Crow. Drew Moser would charge from the back to, to third place on the opening lap. First caution would fly when Kurt Allen went around on the backstretch, slowing the field. The second caution would fly with this big crash in turn one as Dylan Crow tangled with Drew Moser, with both making hard contact between turns one and two. Moser is not happy and he makes sure Crow knows about it. The cars of Travis Shelton and Christopher Hudson also got a piece of that too. Race officials are soon on the scene and they break up the situation. Race officials put out the red flag to clean up the scene. With an impending time limit, the race is cut to just five laps. On the restart, Freddie Hale Jr. moves to the lead with Scott Walker in second and Buck Simmons in third. Simmons would move to second with a pass in the first turn while Dale Walker moved to third in turn three. Up front, Hale Jr. powers, powers away to the victory. Simmons finishes in second with Dale Walker in third, Scott Walker in fourth, and Tyler Gibson in fifth. The truck feature was up next with Brad Jeter jumping out to the early lead while Austin Northcutt and Bob Root gave chase. Lap two, Root moves around Northcutt and hopes to close on Jeter. As the race re reaches halfway, Root is closed and looks to challenge Jeter for the lead, but he can't make it happen. As Brad Jeter scores the win, Root finishes in second with Northcutt third and Mike Moat in fourth. 
In Renegade's action, Andrew Cordell moved out to the early lead with Philip Peters in second. The race for third went three wide with Dale Stansel taking the position. Four laps later, Stansel would move around Peters to take the runner-up spot. One lap later, Stansel was all over Cordell looking for the lead. A scary moment here on lap nine as Peters is hooked by Barry Thornton in turn three as the two race for position. Peters' car climbs the inside wall in a shower of sparks coming to rest half on the wall. That draws a caution and race officials send Thornton to the rear of the field for the contact. Caution would fly again on the next restart when the cars of Bobby Emery, Thornton, and Parker Jamison tangle in turn one. Nobody was injured. Back under green and Cordell moves back to the top spot with Stancil in second. Emery bouncing back from that turn one instant. Powers his way around Jamison for third. Coming to the white flag, Cordell slips off turn four, opening the door for Stancil on the inside. The two race side by side with Stancil finally getting the lead on the final lap after trying hard all night long. Dale Stancil will cross under the checkered flag to score the victory. Cordell holds on for second with Emery in third. Daniel Jamison was fourth, and Philip Peters finished fifth. The four-cylinder division rounded out the night. On the start, Chad Tavernia looked for the lead, but his time out front would not last long as Clark Harris moved around him in turn three to take the top spot as the field would stack up three wide. Harris came away with the lead with Ray Mullinax and Charlie Hooper giving chase. Didn't take long for trouble to break out, though, as a three-car tangle between Michael Cross, Brian King, and Michael Webster brought out the caution. On the restart, the field stacked up three wide for the lead going into turn one. Mullinax would jump back to the lead with Clark Harris in second and Hooper in third. Hooper would move back to second with a pass in turn three and had his sights set again on Mullinax. On lap three, he would get the position, but when Chad Tavernia slowed off the second turn, bringing out the caution, Hooper had to give the spot back. Mullinax would hold that lead until the final lap when Hooper drove his car hard into the turn, muscling his way past Mullinax and into the lead. Hooper would get enough of a gap on Mullinax to hold him off. Coming to the checkered flag, it's Charlie Hooper scoring the victory with Mullinax in second, Don Tavernia in, th in third, Brian King in fourth, and Clark Harris in fifth. Let's hear from the winners. Anthony, another Saturday night, another victory lane, but this one, Mr. Gibson made you work pretty hard for it, didn't he? Yeah, like I said, we lost power steering about loud three. It started smoking real bad in the cockpit. We got a good little stretch of run out there on them. Then we got a real serious vibration in the motor. And first time we've run this forward back since we got it back. And uh, it's kind of got my little concern. Uh, we started backing up really, really a lot just to make sure we could just be easy on it instead of trying to stress it out down the straightaways. But when that caution come out there, it was just like, you know, I'm really going to have my hands full. And y'all saw we had our hands full. Goodness gracious. But thank God we come out on top right here with this. But, yeah, they were pushing me pretty good there after that caution. I knew it was going to happen because I couldn't get smooth. I couldn't be smooth in. I couldn't be smooth on the throttle. It was just so much. It's on, this Cameron caster and these things today and this stuff that we run today is nothing like we run two years ago, three years ago. And this, when you lose that power steering, it really... It really takes, I mean, I literally, I'm a one-handed driver, and I literally had to take two hands and drive this thing, and it really messes my coordination up on top of that. So, But, you know, hey, I got to thank my guys, Anders Zink, Busy Beaver Tree Service, Outback Steakhouse, all my guys right here, or Tech Race Cars. They are tremendously how well they can communicate, make some tweaks to this thing, and make this thing as good as it's been. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. All right, little bit Tell me about that win. Well, uh, I had to start in the back. Of course, I won, I won five, this five in a row now. He's just starting the back every week. Uh, it's kind of rough coming through, you know, it, it, it had to beat and bump and whatever, but uh, we did it. We come from the back and we won again. The transmission transmission broke on the last lap coming off of two. I uh, coasted to the finish line. There's no better way for it to break. That's right. That's right. Leading. Started off pretty good. I had to start it backing it up. Made it look like a better race than really what it was, I guess. But uh, I just want to thank the, thank the good Lord above for letting us all do this and the guys that work on this truck. Uh, they all, they've done a hell of a job to get it ready for me, and uh, I just got to thank them the most. And who's your crew chief here? This is my, this is my daughter, Anne Marie. She said, I'm 19 months old in my first race. Well, it's a heck of a way to get started at the racetrack. Congratulations. Thank you. That's the way to do it. On the last lap, tell me about that win. Oh, it was fun, brother. Um, this I won last night also, so uh, it's two for a weekend. It's great. Um, I had a good time. Thank you for everybody helping me. And... Uh, See if I can do it again next week from the back. Now, was that the plan to wait till the last lap and just go after it? No, it's all I had. I was giving it every bit. He, I wouldn't have got to him. He wouldn't have gotten that mirror. You got your crew chief here with you. 
Oh, yes. It's my six-month-old. It's my everything. She like Victory Lane? I think she's loving it right now. Time for us to take another break. When we come back, we will join Mickey Kane, 2000 winner of the World Crown 300, to talk about the upcoming race. You're watching Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. We'll be right back. 30 years, the best of the best racers in the country have traveled to Jefferson, Georgia to fight for the title King of the Short Tracks. The fight continues at Gresham Motorsports Park as Slack Auto Parts presents the 30th annual World Crown 300 on July 4th. The fireworks will shine bright on the high-banked half-mile as Dawsonville, Georgia's Chase Elliott looks to defend his crown against fast aces like Bubba Pollard, Augie Grill, Daniel Hemrick, T.J. Reed, Spencer Davis, and more. And when the action is over on the track, things will get hot overhead with a huge fireworks display sponsored by Royal Oak. Get $5 off with a discount coupon available at Slacks Auto Parts. Active and retired military and their families get in free with a military ID while supplies last courtesy of Kipper Tools. Tickets are $30 for adults, $25 for seniors, kids 12 and under free. Go to racegmp.com for more information. Come see a king crowned at the Slack Auto Parts World Crown 300 July 4th at Gresham Motorsports Park in Jefferson, Georgia, the king of the short tracks.